Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial we're going to be talking about how to set up a perfect bound book using Adobe InDesign. Now before you get started we need to know a few things about the book. Number one, what is the overall finished size of the book? Number two, how many pages are going to be in the book? And number three, how many or what are the thicknesses of the cover and the inside pages of what type of paper we're going to be printing on? And the reason we know those last two, or need to know those last two things, is because they're going to be important when we go to set up our spine width. Now, if you already have that information, if you already know what the spine width is going to be for your book, then you can go ahead and click on the timestamp up above, and it'll go ahead and jump you forward in the video to when we actually set up our InDesign document. If you don't, and you need to figure out how to properly calculate a spine width, then I will open up this. Uh, spine width calculator that I made using Microsoft Excel. I have it open here in LibreOffice. You can also open it with uh, Google Sheets. But this will tell us the exact spine width that we need to create. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the video. For those of you who are interested, you can purchase this through my Patreon page. This is especially going to be important for those folks who work in prepress. Or if you're a designer that designs a lot of perfect bound books and your print service provider requires you to give a cover design with the spine already on there. Before I talk about what's going on here, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the other two tabs here. This one here has paper stocks, common paper stocks for perfect bound books. Uh, obviously, if you purchase this, you can customize this however you want. I would avoid changing... Um, you can change the paper names here, but I would avoid adding or subtracting these rows because I have this set up with a drop down that is dependent on these basically staying in place. However, with that being said, you can just you know say, oh, I use a, a different type of stock. You can type this in however you want, name it however you want, and then as long as you put the paper caliper in there, uh, that's the most important part. And exactly what is paper caliper, right? That's essentially the thickness of the sheet in inches. So obviously 50 pound offset is gonna be one of the, the thinnest stocks that you could use. And that's gonna be a very, very thin uh, paper caliper of 0.004. Now these uh, values I've determined through over the years working with my paper supplier, either looking at the a packaging that it came with or going to their website. You can also use an actual measurement device, a, an actual caliper that will show you the thickness of a sheet of paper. The more accurate these numbers are, the better. And the reason why is because especially when you get into books that are much thicker, you need to calculate your spine width properly. And so if you have a spine width that's either too thick or too thin, that's going to prevent or present problems in your bindery department. Either the book block um, is gonna to be too thick and your spine width is not correct. And especially if you don't have a common, uh, let's say background color that kind of wraps around your book, it'll look kind of weird when it goes into the bindery department. So make sure that however you get these values, they're going to be as accurate as possible. The last tab here is for common book sizes. This one, if you want to, you could add additional uh, book sizes to it. I have it set up with three different categories, a portrait, landscape, and square. Um, but basically that's going to determine the values here in this drop down on the first page. So your uh, paper stocks are here with the proper thickness settings. Your book sizes are here. And then on the first page is where we're gonna make all of our selections and input our number of pages. So first things first, we're going to click here on this top one, and it's a drop down. And I'm just going to say we're going to use a coated silk cover, which is going to be a 100 pound silk cover. And then we're going to use a silk book for our uh, text paper. And this is, let's say we're going to use an 80 pound silk uh, books, book stock. So we have our two paper stocks selected. This is going to show you what those paper caliper settings are. Now these are basically just pulled directly from these tables here. Um, then we're gonna select the size of our book. The only thing you wanna make sure is don't select the part that says portrait orientation. You need to actually select one of the actual sizes here. 
Um, so if I scroll down, I can select an eight by eight or you know, a six by nine. In this case, we're just gonna set it to eight and a half, 11. And then here's where you're gonna put in your number of pages, not the number of sheets, the number of pages in your book. It'll automatically calculate the number of sheets right here below. So let's say we're gonna do a 250 page book. It'll automatically calculate you need 125 sheets. Even if I do 251, it'll automatically figure, it'll round up for me. So I'll need 126 pages or sheets of paper to do a 251 page book. It'll also figure if your book is too thin or too thick for per perfect binding. So if I do something like, like 10 sheets, it's gonna tell me, or excuse me, 10 pages, it's gonna tell me, well, it's only five sheets of paper. This book is too thin for perfect binding. And if I click on this box here, it's basically looking at this field down here where the number of sheets are calculated. And if anything goes below quarter of an inch or, or greater than two inches, it's gonna give you an error that it's either too thick or too thin. So if I do like 4,000 sheets, it's gonna tell me, hey, this book is too thick for perfect binding. Now, um, those settings are based off of the perfect binder that I have um, at the shop. We cannot do a book that's thicker than two inches, and we can't do a book that's thinner than a quarter of an inch. That's the clamp settings that we have on our machine. Now, obviously, if your machine is different or your print service provider can do either a thinner book or a thicker book, you can edit that. But it's a nice little warning to have so that you can tell, oh, I either have a book that's too thin or too thick for perfect binding purposes. If it's too thin, I would recommend obviously doing either a saddle stitch book or um, if, it's, if it's too thick, you may need, need to go to either a coil bound or um, a wire bound book of some kind. So anyway, now that we have our number of pages calculated here, it's going to automatically uh, calculate this as far as what we need our spine width to be. This is also going to automatically calculate what the pasteboard size of our Adobe InDesign document needs to be as well. So we have this here. This uh, After we select all of our paper settings, we put in our number of pages. It's going to tell us that we need a spine width of 0.6158 and then essentially it's going to tell us here our pasteboard needs to be 0.6158 as well. Uh, 17.6158 this should be automatically rounded up but this basically tells you how thick your spine needs to be so now that we have all of that information we have our book size we have our spine width we can go ahead and start actually doing our design work in Adobe InDesign so I'm gonna go into the Adobe InDesign here and create a new file and I'm gonna create two files the first file is gonna be for our inside pages so this is going to be an 8.5-11, which corresponds to the size of the book that we selected here. And then we're going to go ahead and tell it the same number of pages. So in this case, it's a 250 book or page book. So we're going to do 250 pages. We're going to make sure our facing pages is selected. And that way, when we do our layout, we can see, okay, here's um, what the page looks on this side or on this side. This will also allow us, if we have any designs, that are going to flow over across the uh, binding of the book. This will allow us to lay that out a little bit easier. We're gonna do one column and we're going to make sure our margins are set to at least 0.375 on all, uh, not on all four sides. Let me break this link here. We want at least 3 eighths of an inch on the top, on the bottom and on the outside. Those are gonna be the three edges that are gonna be trimmed off. So if this was our book right here, this is gonna be our top, our bottom, and then our outside edge. Our binding is gonna take place on the left-hand side, which is the inside part. Now, I recommend going all the way up to at least a half an inch, of an inch. If it's a thicker book, let's say, um, you know, it's gonna be like 300 sheets or something like that, so 600 pages. I would recommend going even further all the way up to 0.75 or even probably all the way up to uh, 7 eighths. That way you can avoid text falling into the gutter. And exactly what I mean is, if I bring this up here, you can see this is a sample of a perfect bound book and this is our gutter area here. So if it's a thick book like it is here, this looks like you know several hundred pages um, in this book. 
any text that is going to be bound up that falls into this area is essentially going to be unreadable. So you need to make sure to either don't put any text in there or push your text over to compensate for the uh, fact that the book is going to be harder to read towards the center of the book. These pages here should open a little bit easier than the center part of the book. But to compensate for the whole thing, I would just go ahead and set it to, you know, for a thick book, probably to at least three quarters of an inch. But let's say we're doing a thinner book, we're going to go ahead and set it that to half of an inch. We also need to make sure that we uh, compensate for the hinge of the book. Now the hinge is going to be the glued in area on the first sheet of our book block. So here is the first page of our book block here that's bound up here on the left and then this is basically the cover right so the cover gets glued not only here but some of the glue kind of seeps in over here underneath on the top and the bottom so this little hinge is going to um, basically cover up any text about to either a quarter inch or three or a three eighths of an inch all the way from the left hand edge of your sheet so you need to make sure to place the text on the first page and on the bottom page of your book inside a little bit more to compensate for that. So if we do it at least a half inch, that should be okay. But as a good rule of thumb, even on the first page, you want to might you might want to go even maybe another in, uh, uh, one eighth of an inch further in just to make sure that that doesn't get covered up. So. We also want to put a eighth of an inch bleed on all four sides. It's pretty standard for any kind of design in the print print world. And then we're ready. We're we'll go ahead and hit create. And if you see here, our pages are already set up. And this will show you where the gutter area is of our bound book. So this would be the right hand side and the left hand side page. That way, if you have a design that, like I said, flows across, you can make sure that it doesn't fall into the gutter area in weird ways so that um, you know it, it doesn't look right after the binding. I'm not actually going to design a book. Uh, obviously, the, I work in pre-press, so books have already come to me pre-designed. Um, but this gives you a starting point for the design of your book. or if you work in the pre-press department, if you set everything up and then you place in a customer provided PDF file, with these margins you should be able to kind of scroll through the book and tell if any of the printing has fallen inside of this area. And then that way you can alert your customer and say, hey, there's going to be an issue with printing on page 37 or 36, whatever it is. You have some text that falls into the gutter area and will be essentially unreadable. That way the designer can go back and they can fix it on their end. So this is going to be that's going to be the first file that we're going to um, produce. This is this is for the inside pages of the book. Then we're going to create a new document, and this is going to be for the cover of our book. So in this case, we're going to set our width to whatever is specified here in the pasteboard. So we're going to go to 17. Point, uh, we'll just call it 6158. So we go back here and go to 17.6158. We're going to keep our height the same and we're going to change this from obviously 250 pages down to either one or two. A lot of times you have books, perfect bound books that don't even have a design on the inside part of the cover. Um, but if you want, if you do, obviously you're going to have to do two pages. You want to make sure facing pages is going to be off in this case. We're going to create two columns and we're going to make our gutter the same as our spine width here so 0.6158 so 0.6158 our margins are going to be the same on this one and we can just set this to uh, 3 eighths of an inch it should be fine and then obviously we still need a 1 8 inch bleed on all four sides so we're going to go ahead and create and you can see here we have a two page InDesign document and this is going to be where your front cover is your back cover is and then this is going to be your spine and then obviously on page two this is going to be the inside of the front cover and the inside of the back cover and this is going to be the area that actually gets glued so there's going to be no printing in that area whatsoever so just as a, a quick reference here this is our front cover and we'll just center this up give it a nice big 
font size if I select it probably help center it up copy this over this is going to be our back cover and then I'll create a new dot or a new text box and call this spine again we'll center this up ignore my email alert here and then you're going to place this basically in the center position of your book laying this out so that it bleeds off the top and the bottom in case you have you know say a background color or something like that and this is where you're gonna put your spine so if you go this text box is gonna be basically your borders and I would even put go in here and go to text frame options and actually just do a little inset here so that you make sure that you stay at least 1 16th of, a, of an inch away from the left and right hand side that way you don't have anything that kind of gets funky with um, where the score is going to be for the cover my recommendation working with perfect bound books is to keep a consistent color that kind of bleeds over from front to back that way you don't have any areas that look kind of weird I've done a lot of books where the front cover is one color the back cover is a different color and sometimes the binding is not exactly perfect and it'll look kind of weird after it's been uh, bound up because you'll have some of the color bleeding over onto the spine from the from the back or not enough from the front so it looks kind of weird so I would recommend using a solid color or at least one design that kind of bleeds across uh, consistently so that's your setup here for your cover so now you have two files after you've done your design work you can go ahead and export those as PDFs send those off to your print service provider to be printed I do have a couple here that I've already created let me open these two up so here I have my pages mock-up and so it's facing pages just like I set up before this area here is going to be your gutter this is going to be your outside area where it's going to get cut off so as long as we don't have any text that basically falls into those areas we should be fine so if I kind of just scroll through here you can see solid here but this is going to be well within the um, gutter area and well within the cut line here so we don't, shouldn't have to worry about that at all and then our cover here is just a one-sided cover but it's set automatically to what our spine width was so I have a little uh, text box here with the same information here and then it's our front cover this is our back cover and essentially that's it that's how you set up your perfect bound book if you have any questions please leave them down in the comment section below I'm happy to help if you're interested in this spine calculator again I'll leave a link down in the, the uh, description to the patreon page where you can purchase this if you're interested um, otherwise I'd appreciate it always if you leave a, li a like, leave a comment, share, and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll catch you on the next one.